changing your life one story at a time. This is the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast with Editor-in-Chief Amy Newmark. Hey, it's Amy Newmark with your daily dose of Chicken Soup for the Soul inspiration. This daily podcast is my way of sharing some of my favorite tips and stories with you. And these are selected from more than 20,000 stories in the Chicken Soup for the Soul library. These stories have changed my life, and I'm hoping that they will change yours too. Today is Tip Tuesday, and on Tuesday, I pass along what I think are the best tips from our stories. These are actionable ideas that you can use in your own life, ideas that are simple and universal. They should work for everyone. In our last podcast, we heard what Georgia Schaefer had to say about eliminating the negative from her life and making sure that her friends add value to her life. We learned that we can indeed choose our friends. But what about at work? You can't always choose who you work with, but you can choose how you deal with your coworkers. So you just need a strategy. There's a great quote from Joan London, who happens to be one of our authors. We've made a couple of books with her. And Joan says, holding on to anger, resentment, and hurt only gives you tense muscles, a headache, and a sore jaw from clenching your teeth. Forgiveness gives you back the laughter and the lightness in your life. I have a forgiveness story to share with you today, and I think it's going to work for you. This story was in our book called Chicken Soup for the Soul, The Power of Forgiveness. The story is called Thank You, Kate. And in it, Elizabeth June Walters tells us about a woman named Kate at her office who harassed her, lied about her, and stole credit for her work. It was not a pretty picture. And the problem even invaded Elizabeth's home life one day when she received a nasty card from Kate. And the front of the card showed a picture of Jesus standing in front of Rainbow with his arms outstretched. And the front of the card said, Jesus loves you. But inside there was an ugly note, a swear word. There was no signature and no return address, but Elizabeth knew it was from Kate. So this was a really bad situation, right? Eight years of working with this woman, and it had gone to a new low. And how had this all happened? Well, it had started a few years earlier when Elizabeth had done a project and Kate had received credit for the project. And then Kate started blaming Elizabeth for some of her own mistakes, and they just had a battle going on at work. Elizabeth knew that Kate had a difficult home life, so she tried to be understanding. She wrote nice notes to Kate. She brought into work samples of her favorite teas for Kate to try. She apologized to Kate for whatever she had done that had offended her. But nothing worked, and Elizabeth was dreading going to work, even though this had been her dream job. She had loved this job. So Elizabeth talked to a friend about it, and her friend said, Why don't you pray for Kate? No matter how you feel, just pray for her and wish her well. It's hard to be mad at somebody who you're praying for. Elizabeth tried it, and it was working a bit, but it still wasn't enough. She was still miserable at work. And then one day, Elizabeth was saying the Lord's Prayer, and she listened to the words that she was saying, forgive them that trespass against us. And she realized, oh, I have to let it go. And by the way, you don't have to be religious for this to work. It can work for anyone in any situation. If someone is being a jerk to you, You just have to let it go because it's not about you. It's not personal. Whether it's someone at work, at school, out in your community, the cashier at the store who's grumpy today because she's having a bad day, their treatment of you is not a reflection of what's going on with you. It's something behind the scenes in their own lives. You can't take it personally because it's not actually about you. Elizabeth started saying every day to herself, Kate, I forgive you. Kate, I forgive you. Kate, I forgive you. Until it became true. And she got over her resentment and she just felt sympathy for Kate, for whatever was going on in Kate's life that made her act that way at work. Elizabeth says, Kate never knew that she taught me one of the most important lessons of my life, how to love and forgive someone who hates you. That lesson has transformed all of my relationships making me a better, more loving wife, mother, and friend. 
So Booker T. Washington has a great quote. You know, he was the the civil rights activist, the advisor to many presidents, and he knew plenty about difficult colleagues working in Washington. And he said, I will permit no man to narrow and degrade my soul by making me hate him. That's a great lesson for today. Haters just make us unhappy, so we just shouldn't participate. I'm Amy Newmark. Thank you for listening to the Chicken Soup for the Soul podcast today. I would love it if you would help me spread the word about the podcast by telling your friends and your colleagues at work. You can also rate and review the podcast on our iTunes page. Tomorrow is Wow Wednesday, and I'm looking forward to sharing another story with you. And it's going to give you chills. If you'd like to read more stories and life tips from the book I mentioned today, Chicken Soup for the Soul, The Power of Forgiveness, go to our website, chickensoup.com.